Now, talking about the cons, hallucinations, still a big problem. <laughs> hallucinations are still a very big problem. You might think your chat GPT or your Claude is on point, um, but it's only a matter of time before they tell you something that's completely wrong. They just completely make up information that, you know, and it, it does it at different degrees depending on different conditions. Right. So the longer the conversation goes, the more likely it is to hallucinate because, you know, I'm going to get back to the context um, issue in a minute, but um, you're filling up some of this context. Um, if you, uh, you you can role play so well with these things, that's one of the things they're actually really good at. So if you if you ask ChatGPT or Claude to, you know, pretend to be this character or that character, even the first ChatGPT version that actually released GPT 3.5 was incredible at this. Like I could ask it to like basically role play multiple different characters and it could do that all believably and all within like the same conversation. And so these things, are, they're so good at role playing. I highly recommend you just go test it out and just like, just see what it's capable of. Because one thing that I think a lot of people don't realize is that, yes, a, you know, a lot of people have done this and do realize how good they are at this, but they don't necessarily realize that a lot of the time the AI is role playing when you don't when you don't think it's role playing. A lot of the, those hallucinations are it just trying to to f fulfill your expectations or like whatever you know. Just kind of the inertia of its training data when you're talking to it about certain things. It's just kind of you know these things are next token predictors, right? Just it, like it, it just predicts what's coming next. Of course, it's a lot more advanced than that now, but the, the general idea being that like, you know, it has training data and it's trying to infer, that's why they call it inference, that it's, it's trying to infer from its training data what's supposed to come next, right? And so if you ask it a really silly question, it will respond to you in a really silly way. And so they can just do that. Like, you know, just, just go to it, go to chat GPT and just start speaking gibberish to it. It will speak gibberish back to you. <laughs> and so I've, I've seen, I've seen the difference in conversation between people that are, for example, more libertarian oriented, right? Versus people that are more leftist, for example. And you can watch how they're this, the same exact model, whether it's GPT or Claude or Grok, the same exact model will speak to different people differently based on what it knows about you and the conversations you've had previously. It tries, it tries to basically establish rapport, just like, you know, just like humans do. We kind of mirror each other and stuff like that a lot of times and we have our mirror neurons. Yeah, I mean, it, it does the same thing. I'm in total agreement with what Christoph Melchizedek was saying about it being, you know, a mirror, a reflection. Um, yeah, it does that really well. Reasoning still needs work. Oh. They are a lot better now at reasoning than they were previously. You know, it was really popular in the early days to be like, oh, AI is just a stochastic parrot and it's just, it doesn't actually have reasoning capabilities. It's just, you know, just predicting the next token. And even in the early days, that wasn't even entirely true. I'm talking about early days in the sense of like GPT 3.5 when chat GPT first came out. That wasn't even entirely true then. They, it did have reasoning capabilities. It just wasn't very great. And they, with the release of the reasoning models that started to come out about a year ago now, um, they've actually been making really big strides in reasoning capability. I mean, even, even at the end of last year, you could ask them silly questions like, it's a, it's a notorious kind of like AI trick that like they couldn't tell you how many R's there are in the word strawberry, right? You could ask, just ask an AI, how many R's are there in the word strawberry? And it couldn't give you the answer. Part of the reason being is because they're auto regressive. And again, the next token prediction, right? So they don't, they weren't thinking about what they're going to say and then saying it. They're like, just kind of spewing it out as they go, right? And so by the time they would like, you know, get get through the word, they they, they just don't know what's coming ahead of time. Um, again, reasoning models are getting a lot better at this, but there's still tremendous holes in the reasoning ability. I see it all the time, like doing development with the AI. There's just things that like, why would you, why would you do that? Uh, we've, we've talked about this and you know this piece of information. So why would you go and do that? It just makes, makes no sense. 
but yeah, they, they are getting tremendously better for sure. One of the, uh, the ways in which their cognition is also still very limited is just their context. They have a certain amount of tokens, as it's known in AI, right? Basically a token, you can almost think about it like a syllable. It doesn't really line up like that, but like a token is a chunk of a word or a chunk of a piece of information. Yeah, I mean, uh, in terms of images, tokens could be like, you know, a certain amount of pixels or whatever the case might be. It's just a chunk of information in which data is broken up into. And so all AI models have different context windows, as they're called, so they can fit a certain amount of tokens. So if you're talking about a Claude model, it has about like 250,000 tokens, which blows out of the water what we had when ChatGPT first came out, just, you know, in the end of 2022, right? We had 4,000 tokens. And now like the Google Gemini models have a million, two million tokens. So just in just in two and a half years, the amount of context that they can hold has has grown like orders of magnitude. Yet it's still really limited. And that causes it to to perform worse, not only because like there are certain things that you're talking to it about that it just can't fit in its entire context. Like if you're talking about an entire code base, right? Most of these AI models can't fit an entire code base or like, you know, I mean, most of them can fit most books, but there are definitely books that these AI agents can't fit into their context window, right? And so if you ask them about the book and you don't have it in like an external database, then it won't be able to give you the accurate answers, right? Like its ability to be able to answer you based on that information degrades the more context you fill up, right? And so it, it, it falls off the more context you give it. So even if a model has 1 million tokens of context window, by the time you start getting to 200,000, 300,000, 400,000, its performance just degrades and degrades and degrades, right? So that, that's another thing that kind of really limits it because, and, and why this is important, especially in the context of what we're talking about is because a lot of people will notice like when you have conversations with these AI chatbots or whatever, right? It can start off and like, oh man, they're giving me really great answers about this and that. And you can tell it things and it will remember at first and it'll, it'll start knowing things about you and then it'll be able to like answer certain questions. And then over time, you'll start to realize that like it'll forget things or it, it'll it'll get things wrong that it should know based on the context that it has because the the longer your conversation gets the the worse it is at like you know pulling forth that information and so so to deal with that you know there's this process called retrieval augmented generation that ai developers are doing where we're putting information in external databases and giving large language models access to that information and then they're basically doing a search whenever you ask them about anything, right? So so for the architect, I'm super looking forward to playing with it. It looks super cool. I haven't gotten a chance to really like mess around with it too much right now. But so they're using the chat GPT, GPT's program, which basically allows you to do this retrieval augmented generation process where you can load it up with all of your books, all of your information or whatever, and then it can answer questions using all of that information. Right. So it's kind of like and I, I feel like it's important for me to like let any of you who are going to use the architect know that th this is this is on ChatGPT's platform. Right. So, look, I I use ChatGPT all the time. Like, you know, I know what I'm getting myself into when I use it. And I just know there's a lot of you that still have hesitancy about using a model, AI models. And, you know, I'm always happy to like, you know, show people how to do that in a private and secure way when you're not giving any data to open AI or Anthropic or anybody like that. But just knowing that like, yeah, when you use the architect, you're using chat GPT with another layer on top that it does prioritize the this information in this top layer that is, you know, using this retrieval augmented generation is given priority over the model's base information. Um, but that base model is still there. And that's important to know. And I'll, I'll get back to that in a little bit.